Well, for more on this story, we can bring in Rob Thompson, who's a researcher at Reading University in the UK. He's currently looking into rainfall and how it can be best measured. He joins us now from Reading. Thank you for being with us here on France uh, 24 this hour. The French government, uh, as we heard in that report, is warning that this could be the worst drought to ever hit the country. Do we have any clearer of an idea of how damaging it could be. We've seen water restrictions brought in and, of course, farmers already suffering. Right. It, it's clearly a really bad drought. It's caused by a combination of problems. There's obviously been a massive lack of rain over this is a huge swathe of Europe, really. Uh, me, sat in Reading. It barely rained since the beginning of July at all. And really the whole of 2022 so far is really dry. But France is incredibly dry, probably even more so than Britain. And not only is it dry, it's really hot as well. And it's been hot for probably the best part of a month. It's been just hot, not even warm, hot. <laughs> and that just means water use is just massively up, just day to day for people, but also massively for any kind of agriculture, just they're having to water and irrigate. And it just increasingly, it's just not possible. We're seeing huge problems from that. And actually, that's then adding to other problems. It's giving us fire risks and so on, in part because agriculture, they're having to harvest, etc., at a time they're not used to, under much drier conditions than they're used to. And that creates a fire risk from farm machinery hitting rocks and so on, just makes little sparks. It's how you can start a fire. You hit rocks together or with metal on rocks and they can make sparks and can so easily start fires now. And if everything is so dry and... In Britain, it's really bad, but in France, it's even drier. And over sort of Spain and so on, there's big parts of the Europe at the moment. It's so dry. It's just so easy to start fires. And once they get going, they can be incredibly dangerous. Now, when rainfall does finally come, how long could it take for these arid conditions to change and for some improvement to be seen? I think we have to be really wary, actually, of when rainfall does come, how it comes. So sort of looks like this weekend coming into next week at least there might be a bit of a break in the really dry period for this part of Europe that it looks like we might be getting more sort of thundery showers type rain which could be really heavy and actually very dry soil doesn't absorb water very well it tends to run off so we could have problems with potentially of flash flooding but also it not soaking into the ground very well and so we could actually have a just because it rains might not solve the problem in a sense. We might, like the soils and agriculture, might not recover enough just from that. What we really need is what I would describe as pretty classic British weather. Days of drizzle would be the real solution here. We need light rain. We need autumnal rain, really. And I think we're going to be looking at least till the autumn to really solve the drought problem. Even if we get rain now, it's unlikely to be the type that's going to make a really long term big benefit. And in a sense, we need to hope for a reasonably wet autumn and winter. Let's not go mad. Let's not go so wet that we have massive flooding everywhere, but wet enough to sort of replenish the reservoirs, the soil, not just sort of real reservoirs for drinking water and tap water, but also the sort of reservoirs, the natural ones within the soils and so on. So they're just so dry at the moment. And it's all exacerbating. The dryness makes the heat, the heat waves hotter, there's no, very little evaporation to cool things down. And that then is making the drought worse because there's more evaporation. When it does, there is any water, there's more evaporation because it's hotter. So it's a horrible sort of stuck in a cycle at the moment. And many Europeans are, of course, quite naturally starting to ask, is this going to be the new norm? Yes, so it's a pretty reasonable question, really. Is this the new normal? And I don't think it's fair to say that what we're having this year is a new normal. But... What we're seeing this year is showing what's now possible, what possibly wasn't possible. So the huge temperatures of two weeks ago that we were having over sort of all of Europe, not quite as high anymore, but they're still pretty hot. And like the UK, we're expecting temperatures that realistically were incredibly rare. Even 10, 20 years ago, we're expecting them to have a run of days this week. So it's still really hot. So. We are seeing now that heat waves, dry spells, etc. we expect them to be more extreme under climate change. And while this is probably a rare event, we're not going to be seeing this every summer. I think it's reasonable to think every few summers we will see 
really extreme droughts where we'll see really hot weather, etc. And we have to prepare our infrastructure to be able to cope with what is no longer the impossible levels of drought and heat. And Rob, I don't want to talk just um, about France. You were, of course, uh, in Reading in uh, the UK, where the government has issued yet um, another uh, weather warning. This is, of course, a country that's not used to uh, such high temperatures. Well, exactly. And I think that's really important to point out that in the UK, we're not used to temperatures in the high, mid to high 30s. It's just we reached 40 two weeks ago and 40 degrees Celsius is just not something that we expected to really be possible until very recently. And even now, it seems like it was a real stretch. And when it was first being forecast, a lot of meteorologists were questioning whether it would really happen. But obviously it did. And we have to think our infrastructure isn't set up for it. Lots of parts of the world get to 40 degrees very regularly. The UK has seen it once in our history from hundreds of years back. So we haven't built infrastructure to cope with it. You don't build infrastructure that copes with situations you don't get because of the cost. And that means our infrastructure wasn't built for this. We don't have air conditioning in normal people's homes. It's just not something that people have. And so escaping the heat is really hard. Our houses are built to retain the heat in the winter when it can get quite cold. Now, suddenly we're finding it's retaining the heat when it's 35 degrees outside, and that's a much bigger problem. OK, Rob Thompson at Reading University, thank you very much.